Hello, my friend and friend. Recently, I put up this quiz on YouTube and much to my surprise, a lot of people got it wrong. It was a little bit of a trick question since visited is a pseudo class and not a pseudo element, but a lot of people went with marker and selection, which means a lot of people don't know what marker and selection are, and they're two of my favorite pseudo elements. So I wanna explore them with you today. And we're gonna start with selection. So here I have you know, just a very simple page. And we're gonna come all the way up here and we're gonna do a double colon for a pseudo element and we'll say selection. And you can just do some stuff here. You can't change everything, but right now if you do a selection, we have a boring blue color, and we could come through and say that this uh, selection here is actually going to have a background of red. And if we do a background of red, when I select, it becomes red. Or you might have a brand color that's more yellow and you do your selection as yellow, and then you can't read your text. So to fix that, we can come in and also change the color to say black or whatever you need for your text color to be when it's selected. And just like that, it works. It's pretty cool. Uh, you can choose selection on specific elements. So this is the selection on everything. But here I do have a list, so we could say that everything that's inside my list, so I'm just putting a space here to make this a descendant selector, and we can say selection here, where the background will be red and the color will be white. And now, once the, the page refreshes there, uh, we can see that's working there, and I get to my list, it changes. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but maybe you have certain things you want to do, or if you have areas with light themes and dark themes and other things, or you do want to change the color, it's nice and easy to do. Uh, you can also make these transparent colors. They don't have to be <laughs> with keywords, so you can have you know a lower opacity on it just so you can see the things that are behind it a little bit, a bit more like what the default is like. There are some things you can't do on the selection pseudo element. Uh, if we go over to MDM here, we can see that it's allowable properties and there's a limited things we can do. So you can choose your color, your background color, a text decoration. So you can actually change the text decoration when something is selected. I think that one doesn't work in Safari, but everything else does. You can actually change your text shadow if you need to um, and do some strokey stuff if you'd want to. But it does mention here specifically the background image is ignored, so you can't do gradients, which would be kind of cool if we could, but uh, sadly we can't. But yeah, we can play around with our colors and text properties basically uh, for when we're doing selections. So that's a, one nice sort of way that you can customize and brand your site. And another way we can make things a little bit more interesting is we can come on to our markers. And what is a marker? Markers are on our list items. So like the bullets or the numbers we have here. And I've seen all sorts of complicated ways that people use to fix those up. But what we can do is we can come and we can just say marker and this would be site wide because it would select every marker everywhere. Uh, and let's just say the color now is red because I guess we're doing red branding today. <laughs> you can see my bullet points have changed over to red. Uh, let's also just come on my UL here and say the font size is, I don't know, two rem, just to make it quite a bit bigger so we can see that a bit more clearly. Uh, and I am gonna switch this UL over to an OL, so it's an ordered list, and you can see it will also work for my numbers. <laughs> of course, now that changed my font size uh, as well, because we'll do a UL OL, so I can switch between the two of them. So yeah, it works for both ordered and unordered lists when we style a marker. But importantly, the marker is actually a pseudo element on our list item. So if we come and take a look here, I'm gonna inspect on here. And in my list items that are here, let's make that a little bit bigger. If I go and look inside, I can actually see the marker here in Chrome. And the, so the marker is always inside of our list item. And there's the marker and it floats off in that empty space that's getting created out there. So just important to know they're inside the list item. And the reason that's important is you might want to do something like you have, let's make this a UL again. And I'm gonna give this one a class. We're gonna say class is equal to fancy list. Or yeah, fancy list is fine. <laughs> I don't have a better name for it. Uh, and then maybe you don't wanna do all of your markers. You only wanna do the marker for your fancy list. So if you do that, we can't write it this way with the dot in the front because the marker is not part of my fancy list. It's a descendant of it. So we're gonna put a space here. So now we're saying the marker that's a descendant of my fancy list. And if you wanted to, you could include the LI here, but we don't need to. So it's up to you whether you want to include it or not. And I'll just do it like this. So now my fancy list has a color of red, but instead of color, we can actually do other things like we can change the content. So if I come here, I could write ABC and it's actually going to put that ABC as the content there replacing my bullet. 
I wouldn't do this for numbered lists because if it's a numbered list, we probably want numbers coming in. But for an unordered list, it could make sense to come here and change something. You can actually use your emoji. So here, if I open up my emoji picker, uh, I can come in and I can add in an emoji if I wanted to. So we have our, our cheers going on right there. And when you do that, we can do a few things like maybe you need to change the font size of it and make it a little bit smaller. Uh, I'll use M here so it's relative to the font size of that. Or if we want to make it bigger, we could always make it bigger. Let's make it quite a bit bigger actually because we're going to see, there we go, it comes in and it's bigger, it's shifting things around a little bit. I tend not to change the font size unless it's small adjustments because there's not a lot of properties we can actually do to make further adjustments if the alignment is off on these. So let's actually reduce this font size back to here just because I find right now the space here is really small between the emoji and the T. And if you try coming in on the marker and doing something like a margin on the right, or maybe you're using a logical property and you do a margin uh, in line end of, I don't know, 100 pixels because you want a lot of space, that's not actually going to show up because we cannot put margins here. Just like with our selections, we have limited properties that we can deal with. But if you do want space there, you can just come here and add a space to the string and that space will show up there. And if I do two spaces, it will add two spaces. It's not the best way just to like space things. It's never the most consistent way to do something. Uh, but you know, at least that gives us that space. And then I could just say that my fancy list has some padding inline start, which would be on the left side, my padding on the left. And we can make that like two rem or something just to make it a bit bigger. Oh, we need to make it bigger. <laughs> I don't know what the default padding is, but obviously it's probably around three. Um, and but you can play with the padding on the list to move it into place however you'd like to place it with that larger space there now. And if we jump back on over to the MDN, we can see this allowable properties for our marker here. And we have all the font properties that are available. We can play with the white space, the color, and we have a few other ones that you probably don't do too much here with and the content. And all animation and transition properties are available that we can't transition necessarily like some of the things you could transition colors. Uh, though, but we can't transition content, for example. Um, but yeah, you can play around with the markers a little bit. If you do need additional styling beyond those, then you'd have to, instead of doing the marker, you'd have to come in with a before or after if you do need sort of additional controls on how you're styling things. And if you enjoyed learning about these underused or underknown, underappreciated pseudo elements, there are also a lot of underused and underappreciated pseudo classes as well. And I covered some of those in a video, which you can watch right here. And with that, I would like to thank my enabler of awesome Andrew, as well as all all my other channel members and patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome. I'm also coming really close to a million subs. So if you haven't subbed yet, please do consider subscribing. Thanks so much. Bye.